Hey everybody, it's me, Andy. And me, Sean. And this is the Commander's Brew. This week, Grand Warlord Rada. <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome back. It's episode 155 of the Commander's Brew Podcast. John, how are you doing? Ooh, 155, feeling alive. Feeling alive, feeling the jive. Uh, uh, try to eat some chives. I'd like to drive. Give me five. Well, I already did five. Okay, five, 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 five doesn't rhyme with five technically. Although, don't tell that to Don McLean. Okay. Writer of American, American Pie. Does he rhyme pie with pie? No, but he he writes uh, bad news on the doorstep. I couldn't take one more step. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I see what you're doing, but like the step step yeah. certainly does not rhyme with itself. Yeah, in fact, nothing does. Nothing rhymes with itself technically. No, yeah, technically, the only thing there is with rhymes is technical. Yeah. It could sound like a rhyme, and I'm cool with that, but you can't just go step and step. It's the number one, you know, it's, <laughs> this has nothing to do with bad joke. But I was talking, I was talking to my wife, Sarah, about uh, musical pet peeves. Yeah. And what are some of your musical pet peeves? And okay. rhyming, rhyming the same word with the same word is definitely one of mine. Uh, this was given to me, I was listening to an older podcast of other people and they were joking around how like and once they mentioned it i'm like i think this is my pet peeve now specifically when they reef say things in a way no er earthling says things to make the song work yes uh like and the example that they use that i'm like oh no is from billy joel's piano man where he calls it a tonic and gin Oh, and it's like yeah. no one in the universe calls it that. It's a gin and tonic. And if you want to get like... sassy, it's a gene and Tony. But it's <laughs> just, yeah, no one says yeah. tonic and gin. Yeah, you can't do that in your song just because you're too lazy to write something different. Um, Another one I have is is more of a lyric thing. It's just strictly the rhyme of take my hand and then rhyme it with understand. I hate that. It happens. Why? Way more often than you think in in music, and it's I just hate that I hate that rhyme because it's the it's like to me it's just happened so often that it's like the it's like that's the all you could think of, that's all yeah. you can think of to say there. Now, okay, here's something. This might be confirmation confirmation bias on my part, but I feel like whenever I'm at a restaurant, I don't normally hear music in the Spanish language, but if it's usually when I'm at restaurants and they have ambient music and things like that. I swear, every time I'm listening to Spanish music, the word corazón appears when I'm listening. It's like, which means heart in Spanish. And it's like every, you can't write a song in Spanish without being it about a heart. And I'm like, good for you, people who speak Spanish, for being so romantic. Yeah, I mean, there's, if, if, if there's a key word in the language you, you understand, I'm sure... You're gonna you're gonna hear that more often. You're gonna you're gonna come. I guess across, so. You know what I mean, yeah, that definitely yeah, yeah. is confirmation bias. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, all right. Well, there. Send us your musical pet peeves. Uh, oh, I would love to hear them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's we said Commanders Brew. Let us know. Uh, yeah. So, guys, we are back here. Episode one fifty five. One fifty five. Uh, a bunch of stuff to talk about as well. Oh, baby. Uh, well, let's just summarize what we're doing here. We're going to make a deck. It's mm-hmm. going to be 50 bucks or less. We're going to give you some ideas for cards. We're going to eventually suggest some more expensive cards for those of you who don't like the budget restriction. Uh, and we got to especially thank some people. We got to thank our patrons, patreon.com. Ooh, baby. Uh, <laughs> if you are a patron, thank you so much. See you in the Discord chat. Uh, and if you're not a patron and you love the show and you love listening, that is awesome. Thank you so much for that. We'll take it. Uh, but if you <laughs> want to become a member, you know what to do. We also want to thank Ultimate Guard uh, for the sleeves and the boxes. They man, love them archives, love them mat, the, the mats. Oh, so good. Yeah, the regular old mats. Yeah, matte finish. I don't mean like play mats. Yeah, uh, <laughs> people always come up to us and they're like, "Are these uh, eclipse sleeves?" It's like, no, man. These are the these are the the regular like very affordable Ultimate Guard matte sleeves. Yeah, I've been on the same draft set for 
since like original Ixalan or earlier. No, earlier, probably like uh, Hour of Devastation. Anyway, Devastation. Uh, Professor uh, gave him then... a B. I think a B plus, maybe even. Anyways. Ooh. Anyway, one last thing we got to mention. We're gonna thank the Wizard Tower, WizardTower.com. Uh, they've been with us from the beginning, and they will continue to be, to be with us. But a big change is happening. For those of you who actually listen to the ads, uh, I'm going to say it here just in case you want to skip it. Because of the this geopolitical the part, climate. This is probably more the part that people skip, to be honest. Oh, is it? I bet anyway. you. <laughs> well, okay. You know, that's not that's fair. Anyway, but if you're not skipping it, guess what? A whole bunch of politics went down. There's a whole bunch of unnecessary tariffs because our Canada and the U.S. are being bullies to each other. So <laughs> please, <laughs> now you don't need to be so uh, uh, whatever. You know, it's uh, it's for sure Donald Trump's fault. Okay, I just hate politics. Brings me down. I don't even want to get specific. There's a trade war. It's a trade war, and because of tariffs. Magic cards cost 10% more to cross the border, and the Wizard Tower has decided that it's not worth charging more to ship to the U.S. It would just be pointless for business, so they're no longer shipping to the U.S. Thanks to trade war. Thanks. Thank you, Donald Trump, for screwing Uh, up Magic in Canada. Um, Because the way this works is, a, a little bit of insight on this, is that they tax a bunch of stuff coming from Canada. So, of course, we have to go, What? why? This has never happened before. Everything was fine. Well, I guess we'll have to tax stuff coming from the United, or, uh, coming from the United States. Uh, and so they pick key things to, like, in electoral districts and states and things like that that will, like, um, affect the president's, you know, approval, I suppose. And uh, one of the things was playing cards because they're made in Kentucky, like, uh, like you know, classic 52 card playing like card bicycle yeah um but because but because of like the definition of what playing cards are magic pokemon Yu-Gi-Oh, all of those games are also hit with this tariff which is so dumb because that does not do the thing that you wanted it's 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 punishing a different totally different like sector of that business so uh, and here we anyway, are let's get off politics let's listen to the ad which is <laughs> which covers all of this in a slightly humorous way. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Ooh, hello. I am an omen speaker. I speak of omens. Omens from M19 and the Wizard's Tower, wizardtower.com. I want to highlight an important change. The omen of increased tariffs between Canada and the U.S. has resulted in such that the Wizard's Tower will no longer be shipping to the United States unless something changes in the future of it. But for now, the offer stands for Canadians. Singles $15 or more, shipping for free anywhere in Canada. And you'll still get 3% kickback on your next order. And you can still use coupon code Summer of Brews. But unfortunately, because of the powers that be and mean, mean tariffs. Ooh, I hate tariffs. But it's sort of an omen, and I'm into omens, so I kind of like it. And may I say an appropriate person to give the message, I think. Honestly, there couldn't. there's not a better person. Yeah, this is the and, absolute number one person I would have wanted to get for this. And while while we're at it, a great card anyway. Oh, I'm a, a absolute staple. Yeah, scry two blocks early just for entering the battlefield. Great. I mean, this you know it. It's like she saw it coming. Yeah, it's like you can see omens coming. Right, exactly, and then, and speak then about speaking them. them exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely, omen speaker. Thank you for that. Yeah. Uh, shall we get into the episode? Uh, I think we shall. I don't think there was anything else. Oh, uh, Commander, spoilers are going to be coming up soon. Just a heads oh, up, yeah. everyone. Uh, C18 and uh, your old boys, the Commander's Brew, will be getting a spoiler card. So keep an eye out for that when the spoiler when that season hits. Alert. I think the spoilers start on, what, like the 20, 20th or 28th or something like that? Like, they start pretty late, so... Yeah, um, we've got the date, though. We could tell you when the date's going to be, but that would mean well, looking it up right now. Yeah, anyways, I'll, I'll look that up while you uh, you do your thing here. Cool. So, 
as mentioned, we're going to dip back into Dominaria. We're going to brew a deck around Grand Warlord Radha, or Radha. Probably Radha. Radha. Uh, yeah, if you're just kind of, if, if, if Radha is like giving you orders that you don't like, and you're like, whatever, Radha. And then, and then she's like, what'd you say? And like, nothing. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> anyway. So, Grand Warlord Radha, it's asking to be built around two red green. Legendary Elf Warrior, 3-4, Haste. Whenever one or more creatures you control attacks, add that much mana in any combination of red or green, and until end of turn, you don't lose this mana as steps and phases end. So this is a great way to get a bunch of extra mana, and in Commander, we like to do big crazy things with extra mana. Uh, One way to look at Grand Warlord Rada is if you attack the turn you cast her because she has haste you can is she effectively costs three because you're going to get one of those back sort of if you have plans to use it anyway just general play tips for this deck as we go forward we're all we're going to try to prioritize our attacking creature mana like if possible we're going to try to use that mana to do stuff to leave our actual land based mana as open as possible but there will be times where we just want to pump everything we have into a bunch of effects Mm -hmm. great uh, I made a, a Brawl Rada deck, so this will be fun to see it mm-hmm. like stretched out to the full commander format here. And, yes. and this is something that you can do, right? Like if you have a Brawl deck of one of these commanders, you can now pivot that. Like when, you know, when the rotation happens, you can certainly pivot it into a full on commander deck. Right. Uh, one of the strategies we went to, so obviously we need a lot of creatures to attack with, right? That's kind of the key. Uh, but rather than just jam as many kind of middle range token producers i tried to stick with like like utility token producers token producers that were kind of reliably give us a lot of tokens at once Mm -hmm. or just keep churning out tokens over time like like mana sync style mana sync style yeah that way too because i didn't want to build the deck focused on like a jam a billion creatures get one huge turn and then win the game this is sort of just like a value we're going to get a lot of creatures through tokens that we probably don't care about because we're going to upgrade the mana into just doing bigger and badder things and this is just sort of like a very fast big deck sort of at its uh, there's elements of that but as you'll see the first category of cards we want to talk about are big token producers these are some great cards for this deck and as you mentioned andy having a mana sink version of a token producer is amazing and that's why ant queen's in the deck three green green for a five five instinct it's instinct for a five five (laughs) insect your instincts Uh, were wrong on that word i was uh and then for one and a green you put a one one green insect creature token onto the battlefield so already five five for five is a very good rate on a creature like like that will tussle on the ground with lots and lots of things but as, a, as you'll notice, paying two mana gives us another insect. So this is something I'm happy to spend a lot of bonus combat rata mana on extra insects so that it, as turns go by, I get more and more and more of that and, and then just be ready to make other cards like Ant Queen or other things. Why don't you take this next one? Rata mana. Do, 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 do. Rata well, mana. I missed a, do, 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 do. I missed rata mana. The, <laughs> what? Yeah. Sorry, I was distracted by. Yes, sorry. You're not. You're not gonna. You didn't join my fun game of saying Rada Mana. Do 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 do. Yeah, let's start. I I, I got distracted because I saw a different card in the tab and I thought I messed up the tabs. I got very stressed out about it, but and I missed a very fun game of Rada Mana. Do, 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 do. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, what do you want to do? I totally. Yeah. No, nothing. Let's just keep going. Just I, keep mis- going? I misread my own notes. OK. All right. Cool. Cool little side note there. All right. Uh, another big token producer, the Hooded Hydra. X, green, green for the creature. It's a snake Hydra, a zero, zero. When it enters the battlefield with X plus one plus one counters on it, when Hooded Hydra dies, you put one, you put a one, one green snake creature token onto the battlefield for each plus one plus one counter on it. And it has morph for three and two green. And then uh, when it's turn face up, you put five counters on it. But I think we're going to try and hold out to make this a big X Hydra that can then possibly uh, turn into a bunch of uh, little guys. 
Yeah, so as you notice, this doesn't make the tokens right away. This mm -hmm. is just one. But this is an X creature, which is very useful with having a lot of extra mana. And it's sort of like a bit of a board wipe insurance. So if someone's going to destroy the board, we can get all these snakes back up and then have a ton of mana to play with the following turn. Perfect. Uh, I also put in Oketra's Monument. Interesting. Uh, I tested it a little bit. There are no white cards in the deck, so therefore the white creature spells costing one less has no effect whatsoever. But it costs three to put down, and every time we cast a creature spell, this deck is a largely creatures. A lot of it, because we want to be attacking with them, uh, if it doesn't make a token or is some sort of removal, it's probably a creature. Uh, even if it is... A token maker is probably also a creature. But whenever you cast a creature, create a 1-1 white warrior creature token with vigilance. This is great. We just get bonus mana in future turns for what we do. And if we have one of our give the whole team haste cards out, then the creatures we cast give us two mana back. Um, This is why the monuments are very good, right? So this is definitely a white ability that you see a lot right whenever mm -hmm. a creature will come in it'll make a like a one one white token like there's there's landfall versions of this and so on and they're almost always on white creatures um obviously green probably has something like this too but this is why the monuments are so good because you can just throw these into any color combination of deck and and sort of uh ignore that first line of text but then have the second one come into play and be very uh you know very relevant and sometimes is a, is a thing that shouldn't that that color shouldn't be able to do really right like throw this on a mono red deck you're not supposed to be able to make one one white warrior creature tokens when you cast a, a creature yeah so i love that big fan big fan big fan um another great one is uh from beyond we i remember we were so high on this card when it first came out um yeah and uh it's still good uh, yep. We just haven't talked about it for a while. It's a three. It's, it's still a under a couple gumballs. Yeah, it's it's a, so it's four mana, four and a uh, three, three and a green, for an enchantment that has devoid. So technically, it has no color. So if you had something that was like destroy green permanent, guess what? It does not destroy this. Uh, at the beginning of your upkeep, put a one one colorless Eldrazi Scion uh, onto the battlefield. It has uh, sack this creature, uh, add one to the mana pool. Uh, so you get to add one colorless there. And then it has the ability of pay one and a green, sack the uh, from beyond, and search your library for an Eldrazi card, reveal it, put it in your hand, shuffle your library. So mm, I don't know how many Eldrazi are in this deck. Probably none. Not true. No, really? Oh, wow, great. Just okay. wait till neat moves. Oh, wow, this is neat moves. So from beyond, it's good to know that because like from beyond has that, that extra ability, which I do put it in decks a lot and just ignore that part. But if you can find a way to make that part work, it just adds value to this card. So Well, and can I also point out how amazing Eldrazi Scions are in this deck? Because we can attack with mm -hmm. them and turn them into a red or green mana. And if they're threatened to be killed by blocking, we can sack them for their colorless. Now, that colorless will disappear as phases change. Right. But we've got tons of mana things like your ant queen or whatever, put that colorless to go with the green. It just made and each scion turns into, yeah. I mean, that's kind of a redundant thing to do, but well, I just mean, to give not an if example. it's about to be blocked and about to die. Right. Like you're saying, right. Like now, that's you, true. Oh, guess what? You didn't actually kill anything. I just have a, now, now I have a green token instead of a colorless one. And if they decide to let it through because there's no point while well, you did a damage, I'll take that too. Crazy. Great. Uh, from beyond fantastic card so uh, we've alluded to it a few times already there's a lot of we gotta we need ways to sink that mana if we don't have more cards to cast we need abilities to do it would be a shame to have all that red and green mana and have nothing to do with it so i'm putting in kumano master yamabushi Ooh. Th three green or sorry three red red for a legendary human shaman four four one and a red Kumano, Master Yamabushi deals one damage to target creature or player. And if a creature dealt damage by Kumano this turn will be put into graveyard, exile it instead. Ooh, that's so, good. <laughs> right? So we can take all that extra mana and ping off creatures. Kumano helps us. So uh, your opponent may be tempted to block like chumpy little creatures who don't do a lot, like little token creatures. But if they do, that just makes them closer to death by Kumano. It takes less activations to do that. Yeah. Uh, and if we really need to, we can spend a ton of mana and just exile a problematic creature that doesn't have Hexproof, for example. Wow, this is really good. Mm-hmm. 
Um, obviously, and it goes that's to a player. If yeah. You got, if, if 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 your turn's about to begin and you still have your open land mana because you spent all your creature mana, you can be like, okay, uh, I got four activations before my turn, so I guess I'll do four to you. Okay, my turn. That's real. Like that is a real thing. Like you can. It takes a ton of mana, but in a deck that makes a ton of mana, that's that's exactly what you want to do with it is turn it into damage or creatures or whatever. So, mm-hmm. wow, that's a strong card. That's a cool find. That might be mm-hmm. find of the episode. Oh, maybe. <laughs> I mean, if you remember our Neheb episode, it was also a find back then. Oh, I don't. See? There you go. Okay, great. Uh, what is... Oh, yeah, okay. So, uh, next one, another another great mana sink we have is Steel Hellkite. Uh, the six colorless for the 5-5 five, five flying artifact dragon. You can pay two to give Steel Hellkite plus one plus O, oh, so you give him sort of colorless fire breathing. And then also uh, you can pay X, and it says destroy each non-land permanent with converted mana cost X whose controller was dealt combat damage by Steel Hellkite this turn. Activate this ability only once each turn. Uh, this is a card that um, I, we definitely included in in past decks. Uh, but at one point, like, I think when we first started the show, Steel Hellkite was an, kind of an expensive card. Like, You think? I think, I, it was a, I think it was a couple bucks. Like, not a lot. Like, I think it might have been, like, three, four, maybe even five dollars. Wow. But, but then since then, it's got so many reprints. Um, Fifty cents. Yeah, Commander 2014 was the first reprint of it. So, uh-huh. so I think it was, like, kind of expensive. I remember that. So, like, I definitely avoided using it for a long time, but... Man, this card is a house. Like, I don't know if it's a staple necessarily, but it is very good. Zero mana to destroy tokens. This gets rid of enchantments in a, in a, in a colorless slash, like, otherwise hard to do it in colors of deck. You know what I mean? Red, for example. For example. So it's just a very, very strong card. Yeah. And what a great use for bonus mana that yes. we just generate. It's If we're attacking with four creatures and steel hellkites getting through we can effectively destroy all their four drops for quote unquote free oh yeah i mean yeah you this is this is uh this is an absolute must have in, in a deck like this for sure well and the plus the fire breathing is another mana sink that if your opponent doesn't block it and you can do the math and be like oh you know what i can pump it eight times and just kill you then it's like okay i'll do that too yep because you can fire any sort of fire breathing on a creature is amazing in this deck because you get the mana before your damage phase. So you get to pump it all into that before we hit that phase. Great. Great. Uh, also, I want to talk about Hero's Bane. Three green green for a Hydra that starts as a zero zero. However, it enters with four plus one plus one counters on it. So it's effectively a four four. Then it's got an activated ability that says two green green. Put X plus one plus one counters on Hero's Bane where X is its power. Effectively doubling its power every turn. Sorry, every activation. And we can certainly activate this more than once in a turn. So here's an example where it's like, okay, if, you, if you're if you not blocking it, I can put a ton in. If you chump block it, I don't have to activate it. I can just let it go. Uh, but that threat of activation likely means they will have to block Hero's Bane every time. And if they chump it, no big. If they don't, if they put something big behind it, then we can make it big and eat their thing. The threat of activation in this deck seems like it's very imminent. As in, like... The threat is basically telling you that yes, you will activate it, right? Like this, kinda. You get so much mana, and unless you can see something else to do with it, like you're definitely gonna want to use it on something like this. You gotta use it on something, and the <coughs> beauty is leaving your actual land-based mana still up. Right. That's a fun bonus. That is a very fun bonus. Yeah. All right. Uh, next here uh, we have another mana sink, vitalizing wind. I mean, it's sort of a, it's not a mana sink, but we, we're going to think, sink. we're going to think of it that way in this deck. This is a thing that's just like, well, uh, I included a couple of like gigantic instant spells that we're never really intending to cast normally, but it's just like, oh, I got a ton of rata mana. It makes sense to do this now. Uh, it is, it is uh, kind of uh, fitting though, that the flavor text on this card is um, about Keld. Oh yeah. Which rata cares about. Her you know what? future, that's, the future that's why is I put her it gift in there. to Keld. I'm saying that's why I put it in there. Oh, yeah, that's why I put it in there, for the flavor. <laughs> yeah. uh, the fifth wind of Ascension is Exalter, fulfilling Keld's destiny. Whoa, she talks about the future is her gift to Keld. So, like, wow, that really makes sense. Cool. 
Anyways, uh, what's there you the go. card do? Uh, yeah, Vitalizing Wind is f- nine mana for an instant that says creatures you control get plus seven, plus seven until end of turn. That is, that's great. That's like, that's nuts. Yeah, so you're probably attacking with a bunch of little tokens, your little like warriors and your little insects and your little Eldrazi scions. And it's like all of a sudden, uh, you know, maybe you have to dip into your land mana for this or a couple of rocks, but it's like, whatever. Uh, now everything is minimum 8-8. Eight, eight. It's luck. nuts, yeah. And they're <laughs> definitely going to let a couple someone. of those tokens through. It's like, okay, what, I'm at 24 here. Okay, whatever. I'll just take six from these tokens and I'll block this one, this one, this one, this one, and I kill it. And then Vitalizing Wind comes in. That person's dead. <laughs> dead. Just dead. Just dead. Just straight up dead. Yeah. Vitalizing Wind, although not technically a mana sink, I, I, in my mind, it occupies that space. It's just somewhere we're going to put mana. We're just like, man, I'm not intending to ever cast this for real. So what did you do? Did you just look up like the biggest Instance, giant yes. growth like, b- no, like across I, the board I, well, you could find? I mean, that that isn't how i started i started by looking at instants that were like seven or more mana in green oh, just, and red. Uh, just to see what they do just to, just to see like oh what would be a fun one to cast with a ton of rata mana and i saw this one i was like oh do you come here often <laughs> yeah this is cool i love i love using cards like this which like i've never seen or heard of but this was a rare <laughs> this was a rare nine mana yeah ridiculous okay great yeah yeah, so, okay, so then what happens if we're stuck without Rada, right? Because we're going to be casting Rada a lot. We are going to be... Uh, so that Rada, it will be under threat of destruction or exile or whatever. Because Rada needs to be on the battlefield to do the thing. So, so there's going to be times where we're like, oh, I've cast Rada a few times and I can't really afford it right now, but I got my whole team going. So what am I going to do? How am I going to make the deck run? So here's some cards that kind of help in that way that are sort of analogs to Rada. Song of Frailies, one of my favorite sagas from Dominaria. One in a green for the first two... Uh, so as soon as you cast it, it basically Cryptolith writes your team. Everyone gets tap, add one mana of any color. That happens again on your next draw step. And then on the following draw step, if everything's still around, you put a plus one, plus one counter on each creature you control. Those creatures gain vigilance, trample, and indestructible until end of turn. So it's mainly the Cryptolith write part that we're thinking of. That's our way to like cast a bunch of bigger creatures, activate a bunch of abilities. So we can do it without attacking with tokens, but we can still use them for our benefit anyway. However... If we are met, if we're able to also have this with Rada out, that third chapter of the saga means you get all that mana for free with the attack because everyone's indestructible. So you can attack without any fear, like your entire team. Yeah, Song of Frailies is a true um, uh, uh, enabler in this deck, right? Like, mm-hmm. if you're at parity or, or or whatever, and you you can't profitably attack, even if it would produce you mana. You can just you use Song of Frailies to just straight up tap them and make the mana, and that and then that third one, like you said, like that will allow you to break that parity because you're going to be able to attack without fear, possibly kill some of your opponent's stuff, uh, do some damage and things like that, and then get all that mana and then really get ahead, hopefully. I mean, it also gives everyone trample, so that's not nothing for mm-hmm. when like if we have our uh, our uh, what's it called the hero's bane we could just double its power a couple of times while yeah, that's it has wild. trample yeah yeah that's real good yeah <laughs> uh okay perfect uh another thing we have if we're stuck with errata is noble quarry two and a green for an enchantment creature it's a unicorn it's a one one and says all creatures able to block noble quarry or enchanted creature do so because it has bestow for six uh enchanted creature gets plus one plus one so it's a lure effect, right? So you can you yeah. can bestow this on something for six, or just play Noble Quarry as a creature. You're probably going to bestow it, uh, just because then you get two activations or two like, you know, effects. You get two of the effects. Anyways, uh, and this can let all your guys get in for uh, damage as well as producing that mana that you want. Again, a great thing to to use if you want to get out of that parity state where you can't attack and you're sort of locked up. I think lure creatures might be a bit underrated in general. Like, if you're an attacky kind of deck, this is a move that can really just come out and just be like, well, if you don't have a way to deal with the creature I'm luring, you're going to take all of my damage minus the lured creature. Yeah, that's the thing is, like, I 
think uh, I think they are good. I just think people will probably like. I I I don't think you get to do what you want with it as much in Commander, especially. I don't know. Um, spot removal things like. I don't know. I think there's yeah. enough stuff out there to, to affect it, but I do think they're good, and I kind of I do agree with you that they're kind of like underused. Like, if it's not I, a problem, like go for it and use it. I want to try to use it more. I don't have a lot of field data for it, but I feel like spot removal would work. But we're not going to put a lure on like a must answer creature. A lot of our creatures are not necessarily must spot remove creatures. And I would assume that another player on the board might be throwing down those creatures. I mean, I mean, and then also by it's the same token, maybe Heroes Bane's a must answer. Maybe they're like, I got to get rid of that now before it gets huge anyway. True, yeah. So I do feel like we're not going to do this early game. And I'm going to count on maybe they've spent their key spot removal pieces on other awful creatures. Anyway. Something to think about. Think yeah, something to think about. I think another reason lore might not be as effective in, in Commander is because it is... Well, like, lore, the actual spell lore is in, like, an instant or sorcery or something, right? I don't know. It's an enchantment. Oh, it is? Creature. Oh, okay. Yeah. So this is very similar to this. So it's yeah. it's 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 kind of a one-shot thing, though, right? Because you enchant the creature, and then the creature attacks, and then everything blocks it, and it dies. But everything else gets through. Well, we have 40 life in Commander... So you so you have to make this a huge attack, and then that cre your creature dies, so you don't get the lure ability anymore. Whereas in normal one v one, that would probably be enough to end the game. Whereas here, it's not enough to end the game, and who knows? Like you know, can you now you're tapped out, and maybe people will come after you because now you're ahead. I don't know. It seems maybe well, that's why. Maybe the multiplayer nature of Commander, on top of the life total, makes it. I'm just trying to explain why we don't see lure yeah. effects that often. You know, it's like maybe that's why. I don't, but like, but like, this is also a thing. That's like, n n I don't know anyone who's ever tried, so like, I don't even. I've never seen it work or What's not work. The, there's a Golgari one. As a creature that, it's from Return of Ravnica. I used to, I I ha I used to include it in decks because I was like, this effect seems good, but not act not like build around it at all. <laughs> no. Yeah. Which is like obviously it's not going to be great if you're not like attacking all the time, you know. Anyways. Yeah. Well, in Rata specifically, uh, we don't care about losing the lured creature because we're just we want to attack everyone through anyway and just get a ton of damage through and get that mana right. So if we don't have Rata, we're getting damage through hopefully. If we do have Rata, great, we're getting a ton of mana f safely. Great. Cool. Uh. I forget. Oh, so then I'll take the next one. Uh, Grenzo Havoc Razor. So red, red for a legendary goblin rogue. He's 2-2. Two, two. This is the new Grenzo. Whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, you choose one. You can go target creature that player controls, or you can exile the top card of that player's library, and then until the end of turn, you can cast it and spend mana as if it were mana of any color. So if your opponent's figure out how this deck works they're gonna want to kill grenzo they're gonna want to not let him through so we just won't necessarily attack with grenzo but whenever any of our other creatures get through we've got a lot of tokens we've got a lot of threat of activations for things uh we have we could lure creatures there's a very good chance of getting a lot of creatures through and then we can either goad their team which means their defenses will be probably down for our next volley, or we can just flip a bunch of cards off the top and use all of that route of mana just to cast whatever we want out of it. Yeah, Grenzo, this has got to be... Yeah, this is a card you're real happy to see if once once you're set up and, and ready to attack because that both of these effects just play so well into, into what this deck wants to do, whether it's cast a bunch of stuff with your free mana, of course, or, yeah, uh, make their whole team tap out and... Get in for some more damage. Yeah, love it. Love it. This is a great a bit one. of both, maybe. Yeah, absolutely. Why not? Go half and half, half these. Okay, and now we're coming up to what is becoming my favorite part of the show: neat moves. <laughs> neat moves. Yeah, yeah. Neat moves. Ooh, yeah. ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I remember. No, uh, I remember. <laughs> oh, okay, I hear it now. Uh. I need the background music. To I'm not actually playing the music. I'm just singing the song. Okay. I can't tell. Uh, so here's a really neat move. Uh, we have to do some math, but I've done the math for you a little bit. 
just to illustrate how neat this is. Haze of Rage is a very neat move for this deck. It's one and a red sorcery. Oh, it's a sorcery. I thought it was an instant. Oh, man, I effed up big time. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Okay. Anyway, uh, so the neat move is that Sean is an idiot and doesn't read cards. <laughs> uh, I mean, Haze of Rage is still good, uh, but... I mean, what, you need to use oh, all your I, land mana only, though. I'm really deflated. Uh, one in a red. It's got buyback two, so it costs four to <laughs> cast it and still have it. Creatures you control get plus one plus oh. But it has storm, so the more we cast it, the more it kind of loops itself. And, like, it storms on top of itself. And then we buy it back and we cast it again. And it sees all the other copies we've cast and it storms them, too. Uh, it can give her a big. I'm not going to go into the math anymore because there's no point. Because we're not going to get infinite mana with it. But, uh, anyway. That's, uh... How could you was... get infinite mana with it anyways? Not infinite mana, but like if you attack with 10 creatures, you get to give each creature like plus six each. And right. like that results in like plus 60 damage. Oh man, I spent so long doing that math too. Man. <laughs> well, maybe we'll even just cut this part out of the show. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, let's take it an actual neat move. Decimator of the Provinces. It's a 10 mana Eldrazi boar. This is the Eldrazi, Eldrazi. we were talking about. With Emerge for six uh, green, green, green. And what Emerge is, in case any of you have forgotten since Eldritch Moon, is you may cast this spell by sacrificing a creature and paying the Emerge cost reduced by that creature's converted mana cost. Uh, so yeah, tokens obviously don't have a CMC, so you won't be able to do that. But we have lots of mana, so we can probably just cast this guy straight up. When you cast Decimator of the Provinces, creatures you control get plus two, plus two, and gain Trample until end of turn, and... Decimator of the provinces has trample and haste. So there you go. That's an overrun with a 7-7 seven, seven that has trample and haste. This is, I remember when this came out, we were talking about how it has a similar feel to Crater Hoof Behemoth. So, yes. and it's really going to work well in this deck specifically. So that's going to be great. Yeah. If we have all those creatures, great. And we can find it from, from beyond if we need to. Yeah. So like, here's the thing. You're not, obviously you're not going to use the errata mana on this on this guy because this is the one you want to cast before mm -hmm. uh, attacks happen. But um, Rod of Mana lets you, also allows you to ramp, and you just want to ramp in a green-red deck anyway, so you're going to be able to do that. So um, maybe emerging uh, through, like, another creature that you have out, like a non-token uh, one, can maybe get the Decimator out a little earlier and, and make all your tokens huge. For sure. Great. Uh, this is a pretty neat move, too. Uh, Hate Flare. Five red red for a 5-5 five, five, uh, elemental, but it has Wither. And, and he, so whenever it deals damage to creatures, it puts minus one, minus one counters on it. And it has two red untap. Hate Flare deals damage equal to its power to target creature or player. Wow. So the beauty of this in Errata deck is we're going to get mana from attacking, which taps Hate Flare. So if we're sending Hate Flare plus some of our team towards a player who only has one really good blocker, we're going to spend three of that mana, one of which that Hate Flare already gave us. And we're going to untap Hate Flare and basically take out that one good blocker that one player might have and then and just clear the way for most of our team. Uh, so Hate Flare really makes it so we have a lot more options for you know, deciding where to go and we can attack much easier. Yeah, Wither on this guy is also a huge factor for that, like, hitting the creature before the damage is dealt or after they've declared blockers or whatever. So, yeah. you know, putting five minus one minus one counters on just about anything is going to make it uh, shrink down to a very reasonable size. So, yeah. Hate and flare. and wow. this is also a way to deal with, like, your Avacyns out there, your indestructible creatures. Like, maybe you can't kill Avacyn on the first activation, but you can make her a 3-3 three, three and one more of these. And, like, I don't care if you're indestructible. Now, of course, you're this, zero, zero. Of course, this is an onboard trick. So mm -hmm. they're going to be able to see this coming. So they might, like, stack blockers in a way that will kill your hate flare, um, of course. But if they do yes. that, then you're just going to be getting in for even more uh, damage, and that's more mana for the next turn. So, like, it's not the worst thing to have happen, right? Like, also, though, if you had Song of Fraley's out, you could untap it and then use any or other mana, and then you could tap it again to make another mana. Oh, 
even in the middle of attacks, right? And then that's a very neat move. <laughs> like maybe Cryptolith right is just worth having in the deck too, right? Oh, it is. When we get to our oh, it's there. Oh, okay. Report. Oh, okay. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Uh, right. Yeah, Hate Flare. This is a cool, cool card. I like this guy a lot. Yeah, me too. Uh, let's go to the three stars of the deck. My, I selected for my number three star, Sprout Swarm. One and a green for an instant with Convoke, and it has buyback three. And all this means is you can spend five mana at a time or tap five creatures or any combination thereof, and it don't care about summoning sickness, and you get to make a Sapperling. So at the I can use tons of Rata mana to just crank out a bunch more sapperlings for the future i can save it for the end step of my opponent's last turn uh this is a very flexible card and it plays exactly into what we want to be doing and since it's so easy to make creatures with this i don't care if i attack them into death because and get that mana from them of course yeah sprout swarm that's a classic Mm -hmm. uh the number two star of the deck vicious shadows i remember this card six Mm -hmm. and a red for an enchantment uh, a big splashy ability. Whenever a creature is put into a graveyard from play, you may have Vicious Shadows deal damage to target player equal to the number of cards in that player's hand. This disincentivizes blocking like almost nothing else. Like this is, you can't take seven damage for each little token you're going to block. It's nuts. No. Vicious Shadows. This. How do I not own this card yet? Oh, I don't know, man. Uh, and the other beauty of it is that it's a seven mana enchantment, which is a lot, but we can do this on turn three or four with just a couple of attackers and be like, okay, I've got four lands on the battlefield. I just got another three from that attack. Yep. So great. Here we go. Yeah, that is not uncommon uh, in a Rada deck to be able to do that. So yeah, Vicious Shadows. Woo. Ooh. It's Number from... one star of the deck, though. You want to you protect from blocking. How about War Cadence? Two and a red for an enchantment. And it has an activated ability that does not tap. X red. This turn, creatures can't block unless their controller plays pays X for each blocking creature he or she controls. Guess what? We're going to declare attacks. We're going to get a ton of mana in our mana pool. And we're just going to glance over and be like, how much mana do you have up? Oh, <laughs> three? Okay. X equals four with my free mana. And I've still got a bit left over. And then your opponent cannot block. That is great. Uh, War Cadence... Is like the is like the um, opposite of uh, uh, propaganda, kind yeah. of. Yeah. Right. Like you're, yeah, it's an yeah, X yeah. thing, obviously, but yeah. Um, this and doesn't the let beauty, them block. The beauty is it doesn't target a creature. It just says creatures can't block unless their controller pays. So you can spread your team out, and it still works. Uh, you can use this on an opponent's turn when the, like they can make deals with you and be like, hey. Player C wants to attack player B. I'm like, hey, man, would you throw a little bit into War Cadence for me to help this attack? And I'm like, well, okay. If you give something to me, I'll do it. Yeah. Uh, and, like, this normally is a tough effect because you start, you give up your turn to put a lot of mana into this so you're not developing your board. Mm-hmm. Rata, don't play that. Rata, give me that. <laughs> you, you, you got that mana. Rata, don't play that. Yeah. I don't think so. Rata, don't play that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this is a this is a card that um, this came in the I think the Naya twenty. F- Whoa, okay, that there's my cat just trying to jump on the desk and she did fall off. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, this came in the twenty thirteen yeah commander decks yeah 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 so uh, the 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 Marath and like the the Mael one. Um, I remember seeing this card and just being like, I think this is really good. But you really need to have the right deck for it. And yeah, this is uh, this is the deck for it, I think. This is great. Uh, all-star. All-star in the deck. It, it just... Because it, you can get... It, it in effectively, like, in a way, earns you mana, if you think about it. Because if you're like, well, I'm attacking with seven things. And I know I'm going to lose three or four of them. Like, three or four of them would just get eaten. So mm-hmm. logically... Normally, I wouldn't attack with the three or the four that would uh, just go to die. Yeah. But you can just put that mana into this and make it impossible to block anything. And then it's like, great. Great. I mean. Yeah. And the other thing is, like, with this card, normally, like, if you, unless you have a way to, like, normally you just want a way to pump your tokens, right? You just want to make them big so that blocking isn't profitable for your opponent. But, and, and, War Cadence usually wouldn't be as good because who cares about saving a 1-1? Like, 
if you're attacking with you know 21 ones if that's the way you're going to swarm and win then you don't need war cadence you've got 20 things you've got enough things that like who cares if they block three or four of them but this is just right in the middle here with this deck because you can attack during those turns when they ha they do outnumber you and they can block everything even if your things are kind of big so war cadence is so good so perfect yeah great love it uh, and there was a surprise on Discovery. Andy, I want you to d also be d discover this card Ooh, in, okay. in the context of this deck. I've seen this card before. Yeah, I put it in the the original version of the cube thinking ah. it was so awesome. But in actual practice, on average, it's not very good. Oh, okay. Well, here we go. It's Kusari Gama. Uh, three mana, artifact, enchantment. Or, sorry, equipment. Uh, equipped creature has pay two. This creature gets plus one plus zero oh until the end of the turn, so it gives them that steel hell kite fire breathing. That's um, already good in Rada. Yep, very good. Uh, whenever equipped creature deals damage to a blocking creature, Kusari Gama deals that much damage to each other creature defending player controls, and you can equip it for three. So it's three to cast, three to equip. So you get in with this. You attack with the token. You put this on something. You pump. The, the guy with the with your with your Radama in it, and then all of a sudden it's also a board wipe. If they choose to block, if they block, right? this, they yeah. have to choose to block. So the beauty of this card, this card is usually bad in a draft environment, I, I guess. But we we are able to pump the creature a lot, mm -hmm. so our opponent has to know that if they don't block it, we can put all of our rad Radama mana into this creature, and we will do a lot of damage to them. If they do decide to block will wipe their whole board of creatures. So is this the type of thing you'd put on like the big, like a hero's bane or something? Like, Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. So those those creatures where your opponent will be incentivized to block, but this is the best way to de-incentivize a block. Yeah, it, yeah, certainly, from especially from those big ones. And sometimes they just can't help but block those big ones just simply because they have to, especially with this Rata mana floating around and like Hero's Bane being so big or any, maybe one of the Hydras or whatever. So, yeah, Kusari Gama on that is just, ba you know, you have to block it and then you have to have all your creatures die. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Neat, neat find. Yeah. Fun. I can't wait to like put my opponent in that position. I love when my opponent, like, you could easily just say, like, why not make it unblockable? Why not put Whisper Silk Cloak on it? It's like, Sure, that's fun too, but it's more fun to like give you watch your opponent agonize over like, oh, I can't win either way. Both choices are bad. Yeah, that's a real that's a true commander move, <laughs> I think, right? <laughs> like normally, like if you're building a deck or you're putting you're drafting or something, it's all about like don't bother with that stuff. <laughs> you know? Just make yeah. it unblockable. Or just do pick something that, you know, is just more effective. But in Commander it's like, look at what I can do with this. Yeah. It's a pure, what? Is that a Johnny thing? Yeah. Yeah, I yeah, think so. It's a bit of a Johnny move. Uh, okay. Uh, it is uh, about to be time for the budget report, but um, before that, we are going to talk about Wizard Tower, wizardtower.com, our sponsor. For so long, uh, we've been with them for a long time. They were here early. Um, go to wizardtower.com and check out what they have. I mean, Right now, we're in a weird state of flux with this thing, with the t tariffs and all this, and they're not so, not sending to the states. But any Canadian listeners, if you want to get in and get some uh, Magic Singles for the new price of 10% more than we normally pay, uh, you, um, that's what's, that's what's going to happen uh, at, the Canadian, at our Canadian retailers from now on. And even if you buy them directly from the states, though, it's the same thing, right? Because it still crosses the border. So, ugh, so ugh, ugh. this trade war, it really, I'm really feeling it as a Canadian citizen, the spoils of war. Yeah. Anyways, uh, hit up your core, uh, core set, your 2019 stuff from there. Also, uh, soon to be, uh, commander 18 is coming out. Ooh, yes. Look out for that. Great. Yes. Uh, cool. Uh, shall we do the budget report? Let's get into the budget report. This is where we take all the cards, see which ones just give money straight back to us, and which ones don't. Straight up, easy, easy to yeah. easy to find that out. Ooh, I forgot the most important detail: what the overall cost of the deck is. But it's like just under fifty bucks. I forget okay. the exact number, but it's like forty-eight, forty-nine, something like that. 
as they almost always are these mm-hmm. days. Yeah. Uh, whenever I brew a deck, it always comes in at around 65 bucks, and then I just cut like the top expensive cards until I hit the limit, unless there's a card I'm like, I can't cut this, so then I just cut around it. Uh, great. Most expensive card currently in the deck is Cryptolith Rite. Uh, mentioned earlier, one in a green enchantment, tap, uh, and it gives all of your creatures, tap, add one mana of any color to your mana pool. Excellent card. Very good card, and now it's almost, it's uh, four bucks, pushing five. Yeah, and it's, it's, and it's just building redundancy into the deck, right? So obviously this is something that, like, is kind of a non-bow with Rada, um, but uh, this keeps your creatures safe. If you want to, if you want to use them for mana, uh, yeah. also there's like you said, there's times where you're not going to have your commander, and of course this is just something that's going to very much help uh, in those situations, and it will help you get your commander in those situations as well. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, what a great card. Um, Got to have it, right? Uh, next we have Scavenger Goose, one in a green for a two-two ooze creature, and it has pay green, exile target card from a graveyard. If it was a creature card, put a plus one plus one counter on Scavenger Goose, and you gain a life. A uh, little bit of life gains, not gonna not gonna hurt anyone. Quite literally, the opposite. Uh, it will heal you, uh, <laughs> and you gotta have graveyard hate. This is something that we've come across in our meta lately. Um, what was it? What deck were we playing? I can't remember. But someone, it was something I was doing. Oh, I was playing my um, uh, the Atraxa like Helm uh, of the Host. The Helm of the Host Atraxa thing from yeah. from GP Vegas, and it was like I was playing it back here, back home afterwards. And uh, I had, like, so many legendary things in my deck and cast and had Primeval's Glorious Rebirth. And it's like, uh, I remember Sean just being like, we don't run enough graveyard hate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. And Scavenging Ooze is just perfect for Rada, right? Like, we get to choose red or green ma- mana. So we can just get it all green. And if we got nothing better to do, just be like, I guess I'll just empty your entire graveyard of all the things that are interesting. Yep. Good move. Good move yeah. for sure. And then the third most expensive card, this is almost, uh, this is about three bucks, is uh, Hate Flare. We talked about it oh. earlier, but uh, this is a card that could have got cut, but I thought it was too neat a move, so I kept it in. Certainly too neat a move. Love this card. Yeah. And what about the out-of-budget uh, section? What about stuff that's very synergistic, works specifically well in this deck, uh, but just outside of the budget? Of course, everybody is probably aware of the infinite combo that Rada has with Aggravated Assault two in a red for an enchantment and it lets you pay three red red to untap all creatures you control after this main phase there is an additional combat phase followed by an additional main phase activate this ability only anytime you can cast a sorcery so basically as long as you are attacking with five creatures and you're getting and you know five of them are still alive you get to use that five to untap everyone get another combat phase and you can just repeat infinitely until you win Yep, uh, pretty easy include there if you've got the 10 bones for it. Uh, next is Xenagos the Reveler. It's a mm-hmm. Planeswalker. Uh, mm-hmm. two, uh, we don't talk about Planeswalkers too often on the show, even in the outside no. of budget version or outside yeah. of budget section. But here we have Xenagos the Reveler, two red green for a Planeswalker, three loyalty, uh, three abilities, plus one. Add X mana to your, in any combination of red and green to your mana pool where X is the number of creatures you control. So just like. That's it. That's the one it's in here for. Right? Like, bam, uh, all of a sudden you just attacked with all your creatures with Rada out, but you didn't actually have to attack yet. Uh, zero ability. Uh, you get a 2-2 pl- uh, two, two red-green satyr creature token with haste. Okay. I mean, no, it's nice that that's there. <laughs> it's nice that that's there because, like, after a board wipe, you know, that plus one yeah. does nothing. Yeah. Um, aside from grow the loyalty. So you, you will probably want to get the tokens back going. So actually that's... I can see you using that. And then the minus six, the ultimate, you're probably, I'll, you, you know, you might get there. But um, the minus six is exile the top seven cards of your library. You may put any number of creatures and or land cards from among them onto the battlefield. I mean, if we're able to, that's wonderful. Like, that's a nice thing to do. Yeah. How many? What's the creature count in the deck? I don't have the numbers for us, but it is dense in creatures. Okay, well, uh, there's, that's good. There's some, en- like, we've talked about a few enchantments yeah. uh, and artifacts. And, and there, sorceries there is a... are a way to make tokens, usually. Yeah, I got a couple of big instants. Like, it's not especially, like, it, like it's not almost all creatures, mm-hmm. but because we get a lot of our creatures from tokens, so there's not a lot of actual cards that are creatures. So, but you'll hit a couple. Yeah, and, and, and Xenagos really is one of those planeswalkers where 
the plus one it's it's kind of rare where the plus one is the most coveted thing you want to do in it right so that's all i care about that's yeah. no problem so it, you know because it doesn't you know you might make the tokens out to maybe protect itself if you've got nothing else going on and then you start pumping them up but really yeah. hopefully you're, you're casting this guy into a board with a bunch of tokens out and then you're just churning out mana and it can be a real a real house that way yeah and it's like five bucks it's not that expensive but yeah. just a bit too much for this deck right on and uh, finally oh yeah i wanted to put in dragon brood mother dragon brood mother is like 15 bucks and it's sort of a it's it's good enough to be like a gruel kind of staple it's two red 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 green back when weird. they started messing around with the mana cost yeah. in very weird ways That's so it's weird. a total of six but three of them have to be red one of them has to be green uh, anyway it's a four four flying dragon but here's why it's so good at the beginning of each upkeep Put a 1-1 red and green dragon creature token with flying and devour 2 into play. And what devour 2 says, when this creature enters the battlefield, you get to sacrifice as many creatures as you want, a.k.a. devour them. And it gets 2, because devour 2, plus 1 plus 1 counters for each creature it devoured. So you're making another dragon token on each upkeep. It also flies. It has evasion. So it can attack easier with Rada. We probably just want to keep them all as 1-1s and not devour anything Mm -hmm. to get more attackers for more mana. But man, every cycle around the table, assuming a four-player game, we've got three extra attackers. The one that came into play on our upkeep will have summoning sickness. Um, And you can even, you can go like, make one, like cast Dragon Brood Mother in a four-player game, go make one, make one. Make one, devour both of them. Now you have a five-five. Yeah. So it can yeah. make one five-five, or uh, you know what I mean, and then and then with haste essentially, because it will then be able to attack. Yeah, yeah. Because if my upkeep, A's upkeep, B's upkeep, and then on C's upkeep, it devours the three that are mm-hmm. already there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, so th- this is the card that I was looking at for the Naya dra- for the Naya version of the Dragon Tokens deck. Um, obviously, but this card was pretty expensive. How how much is it? Like 10 bucks? 15 bucks. 15 bucks. That's US. So like, you know, once you figure in this new gross tariff stuff, like. What is happening? Why is this card $15? Is it just because it only had the one printing? Yeah. Yeah. It's Mythic Rare from Alara Reborn. And it just like every upkeep, it does something very good for free. Mm -hmm. It's just so good. Very good. Yep. Very strong card. Okay, cool deck. I like the look of this Rada, like, outside of Brawl version. I, I really do like it a lot. It Just see the how what what is capable, right, In, when, when you're talking about the full card pool. So this is great. Yeah. Yeah, I love Rada. This is, she's, <clears throat> she's a very fun commander to play. Seems fun. Seems really fun. Uh, because, like, um, so there's a very good episode of Brothers War. Uh, uh, it's the um, <clears throat> um, it's, it's their Alesha episode, and, and and I think in it Ryan talks about uh, being a player that likes to like put up defenses and like sit back and and you know wait for his deck to start doing its thing. And he wanted to get more proactive, and Alesha was a very good way to do that, right? Because it incentivizes him to attack, but also lets him do these kind of combo-y style things with his deck. Well, this is the exact same thing, right? So. Uh, uh, Rada is incentivizing you to attack, so you're keeping aggressive pressure up. You're you have cards in here that enable that, and also then you get all this mana that you can do these big Timmy slash Johnny things with. You know after the attack, so it really does it get it can get you out of that shell, right? So if you're if you're a player, and I definitely do this, um, where I I I noticed the last bunch of decks that I've made are like. Okay, like don't it, like it doesn't. It's more of a combo-y thing. Like it doesn't really use attacking all that much. Uh, so if you want to like get break out of the shell, like if that's the way you do it, but you still want to have that that angle of of uh, of play, this is this this is the style of deck you, you're looking for. Like I'm definitely gonna take my Rada Brawl deck and turn it into a commander deck once she's out of Brawl. No question. Yeah. I mean, that's going to be a long time. That's like a while in the future. Yeah, but. it's going to be a long time. So, yeah, anyways. Um, but it's definitely going to happen. It's going to be great. Cool. Fun deck. Yep. I think, yeah, this is one I'm looking forward to, like, you know, I might, like, you know, 
put a couple of pieces of this together. I don't know. This seems like this seems like a really fun one for Battle of the Brews. This, you know what? It, that's exactly what it is. That's a very fun one for Battle of the Brews. By the way, which is still happening. We are uh, looking. Uh, uh, it turns out scheduling people is a thousand times harder than we ever thought. Um, Especially in the summertime. Yeah, that's what it is, right? Uh, we've got the time. Now we have the gear. We've got everything. Now it's just a manner of getting these schedules together. And we uh, once we do, you're going to be the first to know about it, uh, especially if you're in our Discord chat uh, over at Patreon. So, um, But, yeah, Battle of the Breeze is happening. We've got surveys. We've got stuff to send out. That stuff takes a while longer anyways because we got to make sure all the orders are in together and everything like that. But, yeah, just a little update on Battle of the Brews. I, rem- I just remembered. It's good that you mentioned that because it is. I, I did want to give an update on Battle of the Brews on today's yes. show, so that's perfect. Yes, it does take – there's a lot of moving pieces. It, it does take a while to get everything together and going, but uh, the train is on the tracks and it is moving. Mm-hmm. Inevitability. It is. It is definitely moving, yes. Great. Okay, cool. Well, that's a really neat deck, uh, Sean. Great job. Thank you. Uh, that's it for this week, I guess. So we'll get a Brews News going here after the show. Uh, otherwise, we'll see you guys next week with a brand new deck from the Commander's Brew. Bye. Bye. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Brews News. I'm Andy. And I'm Sean. This week, we take you to Sean at the Battle Bond Arena, where he will interview a 2 2 knight. What an exciting battle here at the Battle Bond Arena. We're here courtside, ready to interview someone. Oh, here, 2 2 knight. 2 2 knight. 2 2 knight. Over here, 2 2 knight. 2 2 knight. 2 2 knight. Uh, it's Sean from Commander's Brew. How was that match for you? Uh, honestly, it's pretty tough from the get-go. Uh, you know, it's uh, it's tough to get out there. Uh, you know, those guys are, uh, you know, they're counting your spells. Uh, and that's going to be tough out there, but you just got to dig deep. Just got to dig deep. And dig deep you did. Uh, after a couple of rounds of that saga, you got plus two, plus one for a really hard hit. What was that like? Uh, yeah, that was that, that that really helped out. You know, we're just sort of remembering the story of uh, Benalia there, and uh, um, but uh, you know, it, it's just uh, it's tough. You know, you got to be vigilant. You know, you got to be always uh, standing up, untapped. Uh, um, but uh, you know, I got to give a lot of credit to my partner. Uh, you know, he's out there making it happen and uh, fetching stuff from the deck and things like that. Yeah, uh, and uh, not without any losses. Uh, one or two of the other knights who were made of stained glass got shattered on the arena. Yeah, you know, that's tough. That's tough. You're going to see that happen. Uh, uh, you know, people you know, people you care about, they're going to get shattered. They're going to go to the graveyard. You know, uh, you know, if you're tokens like me, you're just going to disappear straight up. Uh, you're never coming back. Uh, and that's tough to deal with. But you just got to move on. Uh, you know, you got to stay uh, vigilant, be 100%, give 110, you know. And next up, uh, you're set to face a whole bunch of sapperlings led by Slimefoot. Any tips? Where, where are your heads at for that game? What are you going to do? What's your strategy to take down Slimefoot? You know, he's a tough opponent. Uh, he's a tough opponent, and uh, you got to respect uh, what he does, which is uh, make a bunch of little mushrooms, and uh, that can kill you. You know, uh, I'm as strong as two mushrooms, um, and I, that's just something I got to deal with. Um, so, you know, if I see two mushrooms on the ground, guess what? I'm dead. Uh, so I got to keep that in mind and, uh, you know, just respect and just have a good match up there. Uh, great. And any word on when Deneth is coming off the DL? Uh, you'll have to ask. Okay. Okay, we will. Uh, thank you, too, tonight. Uh, thanks for talking to us. Any last words for the fans, all your young fans who look up to you out there? Um, uh, yeah, keep it vigilant, upright all the time. Okay, thank you, too, tonight. This is Sean with Commander's Brew. Back to you in the studio. Thank you, Sean. Well... That was an inspiring speech by that soldier from the battle. Yeah, that that two two knight made his way all the way to the battle bond arena. Good for him. Good for him being created in the battle bond arena. I guess that one card in Dominaria makes two 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 knights. So maybe they're kind of like partners. I wonder what happened to his buddy. Ooh. Well, anyway, I guess we're all tapped out. So we'll pass the turn to you. Good night. 
If you want to contact us, I'm at Sean Tabaris. And I'm at Andy Hulbo. Send us an email at commandersbrew at gmail.com. You can find out when we go live on Twitch if you follow us at twitch.tv. And if you care to support us on Patreon, check us out at patreon.com. And you can find our decklist on tappedout.net. And if we forgot anything, commandersbrew.com. 